The importance of accurate context is most clearly presented in the study of traditional folk art in America. Self-taught black artists' work enticed collectors due to its authenticity and exotic nature, which had a positive effect on black culture and American society. An example of such influences can be seen through the works of William Edmondson. His direct, emphatic compositions and his sculptures illustrate a strong individual command of abstract form and shows the tenacity and strength of surviving African American traditional religion, visual imagery, and folk aesthetics. All his works were primarily influenced from his cultural beliefs and the messages he received from God. William Edmondson was an African American folk art sculptor from Nashville, Tennessee. He was born in the 1870s during the Reconstruction era. Though Edmondson began sculpting at the late age of 60, he became the first African American and first self taught artist to have a solo show at the Museum of Modern Art in 1937 in New York City. These are a few of his sculptures from the exhibition. Edmondson had very humble beginnings as he started out as an artist. He was born to two former slaves, somewhere between 1870 and 1886. The exact year of his birthday is unknown due to a fire that destroyed the family Bible. He never attended school and spent most of his early adulthood working several odd jobs, from being a farm laborer to a custodian at a woman's hospital. Edmondson finally entered the world of sculpture at 60 years old. He recalled one day while he was working out in his garden that he received a message from God, who first told him to sculpt. I was out in the driveway with some old pieces of stone when I heard a voice telling me to pick up my tools and start to work on a tombstone. I looked up in the sky, and right there on the noon daylight, he hung a tombstone out for me to make. I knowed it was God telling me what to do. After that encounter with God, Edmondson began his career by working on tombstones, primarily built out of limestone, which would be delivered to him by wrecking company trucks. So, without any professional training or guidance, Edmondson proceeded to teach himself how to carve sculptures and tombstones, which he then sold to friends and family in the Nashville community. As a folk artist, Edmondson did not incorporate a lot of details into his work. This is characterized as abstractness. According to John Vlach, author of the sculptures of William Edmondson, when chiseling the rocks to form sculptures, Edmondson would try to minimize the amount of discarded rocks, because he saw the rocks as something spiritual and as something that should be minimally discarded. He also did this because he believed that it would bring more spirit to the sculptures. The novel written by Vlach also emphasizes the significance of the cemetery to blacks in Nashville. Cemeteries was a place where the blacks could maintain their identity and gather together in a large group with the freedom to express themselves. And the simple presence of Edmondson's tombstones united them. In addition, his tombstones were also uniquely designed for each individual. For example, according to author Jack Lindsay, in 1942, Edmondson created a gravestone for a woman named Lou Cockrell that physically reflected her. Emerson tried to reflect the strong stance of her head and broad shoulders into the stone's profile. And in this tombstone for a young boy, Edmondson purposely carved out little holes at the bottom of the stone so that adults could put objects in for the young boy. Such objects included things such as his favorite stuffed animals and little trinkets. According to Vlach, a lot many of Edmondson's sculptures were influenced from the most important book in his life, the Holy Bible. With that, he proceeded to sculpt many religious figures. Such included Christ on a cross, angels, doves, and rabbits. 
As you can see, these designs are all very simple in color, texture, and composition. Other similar artists to Edmondson included Minnie Evans and Gertrude Morgan. Both these female folk artists were of African American descent and worked alongside Edmondson during the 1940s, and they too were both inspired to produce art due to dreams and visions they had from God. The first of many revelations that Gertrude was to experience came in 1934. The story of this revelation is inscribed on one of her paintings. On it, she has written, Sitting in my kitchen one night, I heard a great strong voice speak to me, said I'll make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee. I got this calling on the 30th day of December in 1934. God called me a chastened me and turned me into the hands of his son and Jesus, said take up your cross and follow me. Like Edmondson, both artists received revelation from God, urging them to paint, and believed that the act of painting was a tool for, her, for their service to the Lord. As we can see, both Evans and Morgan's work were characterized as folk based on the simplicity of the materials they chose to use. Although William Edmondson passed away in 1951, his reputation as a black folk artist will forever be preserved through the metaphysical realms and his sculptures.